Chicago Teachers Union is out with a state of the schools report. It comes one day before the one year anniversary of the decision to close 49 schools. Among the highlights of the CTU report, welcoming schools do not have adequate resources compared to other elementary schools. And according to the report, the closings did not reduce the class sizes in the receiving schools. While students were moved to schools with libraries, the union says that only 38% of those schools had librarians on staff and computer labs also got an upgrade, but the CTU says about 80% do not have a technology teacher. And joining us now is Pavlin Jankov, a member of the Teachers Union who helped write that report. Good morning. Thank you for Good being morning. with us. I guess the million dollar question here is, you know, there's a lot of passionate people involved on both sides of the issue. Is one year enough to actually make a big difference to see these changes? Of course, because the transition investments were meant to be implemented immediately. And they said that resources would improve in these schools. But what we're finding is that the chronic under-resourcing in these schools in the south and west sides, the receiving schools, has not improved at all. And what we're seeing is what we call hollow promises because, as you mentioned, these libraries that they installed actually don't have librarians on staff. To be fair, I know that the school district also promised air conditioning. We saw air conditioning brought into a lot of schools. Uh, some students even have iPads these days. Are you encouraged at all by the steps you have seen been made? Well, we've seen some capital investments, but again, the point is that the resources aren't there to make the best use of those capital improvements. So the iPads came, but there wasn't sufficient professional development around that kind of technology improvement, right? And computer labs that they pretty much spent a lot of money putting into these schools don't have technology teachers to So essentially the, the, the manpower behind the resources you're exactly. concerned about. And it seems like you and CPS, you know, there's a lot of disagreements, but the one thing you both seem to agree on is that there's room for improvement. Do you think, what needs to happen next to move forward and how long, what timeline are you playing with to see it go where you want to see it end? Well, CPS needs to stop pushing down what they call efficiencies on schools on the south and west sides because what we just had was selective enrollment schools expanding. They're spending essentially 70000 per seat across Jones, Peyton, the new Obama school on the north side. And yet when they talk about rationalizing the school system, the communities that hurt from that are the communities on the south and west side. So we see this huge hypocrisy in the way they channel investments across the school district. And that's what really needs to change. All right, Pavlin, thank you again for being here. Thank you for having mm -hmm. me. The Chicago Public Schools says that its analysis shows positive trends for students. CPS says attendance improved for half the students moved from closed schools. Student misconduct is down for transitioned students. Grade point averages are up in English, math, reading and science. And the number of third to eighth graders who are on track for graduation is up slightly among all students.